Hey everyone, it's Jacob, and I'm back again with a new video for Total War The Dawn of Stays. Today's video is going to be yet another battle replay, this time between a professional army fielded by Dale, versus an equivalent army fielded by the Orcs of Dol Guldur. With that said, let's get it started. We're going to put the battle into slow motion, however, so we can check out the units first. Looking at the Dol Guldur, sorry no, looking at the Dale Force, I should say, where is their general unit? Here it is. Uh, the Dalian force is led by a unit of Bardings, the Bardings being an elite bowman unit fielded by the faction. And I felt it made sense that a professional army of Dale would have a bowman unit as a general, given that the Dalian faction is famous for being fielded mostly of bowmen. Then, for the rest of their front line, they've got the Marksmen of Dale, which is like their standard professional bow infantry. Got a couple of units of them. Then, making up the bulk of their lines, they've got couple of units of Dalian Swordsmen, which are the equivalent Swordsman unit, Professional Infantry, and then bu buttressing their flanks, I should say, are a couple of units of Dalian Spear Guards, so the Spear equivalent. Overall, a very professional army, and then just to provide a slight bit of mounted support, we have the Dalian, sorry, not the Dalian, the Dale Cavalry Regiment, who are, yep, the mounted Dalian soldiers, essentially. So yeah, all up a compact professional army. You can kind of think of this battle scenario as an army of Dol Guldur attacking the lands of Dale. However, this is many years after the Battle of the Five Armies. Dale's armies have improved massively to the point that they can now field professional forces. And as a result of the devastation of that war, the forces of Orcs being fielded are quite a bit smaller than what they would have been a long time ago. Turning to look at the Dol Guldur force, however, they're led by a general unit, which is the Champions of Dol Guldur, which I... I Pretty cool shock infantry unit, I'm not going to lie. I did kind of prefer their old look where they all had skulls on their back. As you can see, the general unit does. But in a previous version of the mod, they all had skulls on their back. Then looking at the front part of their army, or I should say the bulk of their army, leading the attack from the front, they've got the Gold Oil Glaives, which are another shock infantry unit, a bit lesser. And these are all tier 3 units, by the way. So yeah, both armies are tier 3 professional armies. Then, making up the core of their infantry force, they've got the Gold Oil Blades, which are their professional swordsmen. And then, bringing up the rear, they've got four units of pikemen, although, just as you can tell, they don't actually have pikes ready to go right now. And these are the Gold Oil Pikes. Pretty cool unit. Now, why did I pick pikes? Well, in the film, that's an integral part of their army, so I figured it'd be good to have them fielded here. And it also helps kind of offset the one thing that this army doesn't have, which, as you can probably see... Are archers or cavalry? I felt like giving them the gold tier cavalry that Dol Guldur can field is a bit of a stupid idea, given that they wouldn't really be using that. And because of the current limitations with this faction's roster, only having a handful of units of archers and they're all bronze tier units, it didn't really make sense to have this massive professional army and then have really low tier rabble bowmen. So I figured, screw it, we'll just go for a heavy infantry army and see how it goes. And that's something that they did in the Battle of the Five Armies too. You don't see archer units for these guys, so... Makes sense to me. Hopefully it makes sense for you guys too. We'll put into fast forward so we can see the two lines get ready. And what just happened there? That was a freeze and a half. I've never seen that happen before. That's pretty damn weird. Now, pulling back to the defensive forces here. Nope, they have not arranged any stakes or anything. And I should say putting it back to normal speed. In this battle, I'm playing as Dale. And the computer is playing as Dol Guldur. So if both sides are a little bit... They're not exactly the sharpest armies fighting against each other. It's because I'm not really playing that hard, nor is the computer. So yeah, don't expect any ultra-advanced strategies out of both of us. But I'd say this Orc army that's approaching is what you could expect to face in the later tiers of the game as the mod currently stands. When new units are added to the Dol Guldur faction, they'll be a completely different beast. But for now... This is kind of the extent of their army. And for Dale, this would be the extent of just a pure Dalian professional army. Although you could alternate a bit. I feel like having more archers than anything else makes the most sense for these guys. So yeah, we'll speed it up a bit more. Let them close in. See how they're deploying. And yeah, they're keeping a pretty standard formation. Keeping their shock infantry at the front. Swordsman behind and their pikemen in the back. And, yep, arch fire has begun. We've missed the first couple of volleys, but I don't think they killed anyone. Now they are, though. And here we see the, uh, the prowess of Dale. 
just a bow storm and we'll actually get rid of the HUD so we can see how the battle looks. Good God, they are being torn apart. Now, this unit has already been thinned out massively. There's what? They've lost how many soldiers? 70 there. Put into slow motion as they approach. Good God, that looks amazing. All sides, they're falling, but the heavy infantry isn't really being hit, but that's a smart move. It's not worth engaging with them. It's the shock infantry you should be killing. As you can see, the Dalian army is really doing that. And just like that, an elite force of shock infantry is about to break. Archers are pulling back. And the battle continues. Might put into normal speed, see how it goes. See the clash. Even their blades have actually taken a handful of damage. I didn't expect that. And you might say, but Jack, of you played this battle before, but the truth is, yeah, I have. But I played it a couple of weeks ago, so yeah, that's how far back my recordings are. Pikemen are deploying around the side. Which... You know, is both smart... Ah, oh, I'd say it's a smarter move than anything else. Wheeling around. If I was them, I would not chase after the bowmen. However, I'd immediately engage with the spearmen on the on the rear. And here you can see the size disparity between orcs and men. Though these are fairly large orcs, all things considered. Yep. Now they've just left themselves in the middle of a crossfire. They're going to get ready to attack, but now they've turned their back to the archers, which means they're still highly vulnerable to attack. Now they've just broke... Ah, oh, no, gold or blades. I thought they were pikemen for a second out of formation. And they've engaged with the marksmen. Who they definitely have an edge over. However, if you look over here... Dale has deployed its cavalry, who have already launched one shock charge, and right into the back of pikemen, this is going to be nasty. Now, the goal here is not to get caught out by the pikemen or the swordsmen, because if that happens, they're doomed. So just a standard hammer and anvil movement. at the balance of power but orcs outnumbered them about two to one and now the battle is slowly beginning to shift in Dale's favor these archers are they're losing but they're buying time for the other bowmen to annihilate these guys and good god the ground is turned red with blood cavalry is getting ready now so just by moving around, it's holding back enemy forces, which is very useful. And good god, those shields look amazing when they glint in the sun. But yeah, you don't even have to engage to tie down enemy forces. On this side, the line is becoming a bit... Uh, not much of a line, but still. The forces of Dolgolder have deployed their general. And... That was a brutal kill right there. And uh, this is going to be horrible for them. Ah. Uh, I mean, it is good to finish off broken units just to make sure they don't return. Especially if you can still have the ability to turn around and smack into the flank, which they're going to do right now. Even though they're bringing up their pikemen at this point, it's going to be too late. And, 
And just like that, that Archer unit has survived and broken just about everything else. This unit is now getting thrown into the battle because they've run out of ammunition. Uh, if I was smarter, I honestly probably should have swung them around here to hit him in the flank, but you know, you live and you learn. That's, that's just an execution at this point with that many bowmen shooting at him. What happens to these four? Oh, not they're shattered. Okay. These guys are falling back for some reason. I don't know why. That just happened, which is pretty cool. And the cavalry's coming back for yet another hit. Right into the back of the general unit, which is... Yep, that's a nasty little tactic. And here we see just how devastating shock cavalry can be. Yeah, they can't stay engaged as long as your regular cavalry, the melee cavalry, but even so, they're devastating. Over here, the Dalian Spear Guards hold strong. Even if the Gold Oak Glaives are more than effective against them. Horsemen have pulled out. Smart move. General has broken, which is most definitely not a good thing. And the balance of favor, balance of power, I should say, is now in favor of the men of Dale. Now their formations have been caught out of place, which is just the thing you want. Spread out infantry is a perfect target. General's dead, meaning more of their units are going to break now. And now this little clump is going to get overrun. I'm not going to lie, this Dalian Spear Guard unit you know, is indomitable. Yeah, Spear Guard, that's right. Now the Archer Fire begins. Just like that, a unit broke, and all that's left of the pikemen are fighting out of formation. That and the swordsmen over there, or the blades over there. And there we have it, a heroic victory for the forces of Dale, showing off for just how well a professional army can do even against another professional army, as long as you pick the right army composition. In this case, Dol Guldur had pikemen, which were a perfect counter for a limited cavalry that Dale was fielding, however by using the cavalry correctly, the Dalian forces were able to overcome their opponents. So here we have it, looking at the units at the end of the battle, and just by looking at the casualty rate, you can see that the Dalian army suffered way less than the forces of Dol Guldur. And in fact, just by looking at the units themselves, you can see how far better Dalian's force, the Dale forces went. So looking at the general unit, you got about 73 kills, which wasn't that much, but then he didn't really engage much in battle either. 62, that's a bit eh. 124 kills for the sword unit, that's pretty good. 90 kills for the spear guard, it's not too bad. 107, that's actually pretty good given that spearmen aren't really killers on the battlefield. 81 for this archer unit, uh, which suffered quite a bit. That's the one I think that engaged in melee, that's not too bad. 275 and 267, that's amazing for these guys. But the real killer, of course, was the Dale Cavalry Regiment, which got over 530 kills. So these guys did amazing. These three units were the MVPs of the battle. Looking at Dol Guldur's forces, the only one that I reckon really did any damage at all was this unit of Guldur Glaives, which got 82 kills. The rest did really mediocre. I mean, this one only got one kill. It's got six kills. You can see their forces did pretty piss poorly as far as I'm concerned. So there we have it, people. Yet another battle replay between uh, two army builds you could be expected to see in the game. Now... As it stands, if you guys have enjoyed this video, uh, please make sure to like and subscribe. Every little bit helps the channel, given how small we are here. Now, coming up in the future, we are going to have more videos, specifically on this mod, but also on Total War, sorry, no, Last Alliance Total War, 
which is just recently updated. So you get to look forward to a couple of videos on that new update coming out from me. With all that said, this is your host Jakov, signing out.